Okay, uh, True Lies is uh, finally here on 4K, and um, yeah, well, True Lies was uh, was the first movie that started my journey uh, on uh, home theatre uh, in the VHS days. Um, me and my dad looked on the back of a tape, uh, and it said Dolby Stereo, and uh, we was like, "What's that?" Uh, we had no idea what this was, so. Uh, you know, we went to town um, on the next Saturday and, you know, started figuring all of this out. Uh, we got a demo for Top Gun um, on VHS and I was like, how are you getting this sound quality from Top Gun on, on tape? Um, I had no idea, like, even VHS, um, real releases, you know, not your own recorded uh, releases, like proper releases. Like, they could sound really, really good. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the sound quality was actually very good. Um, it's, I didn't know you could actually get that type of clarity and treble in music, like on Top Gun, right at the start, you know, that uh, montage at the start. I was like, wow, this sounds amazing. Then we figured out you could, uh, you like, Laserdisc was a format right and laser disc increased the quality even further like better picture quality um you didn't have tape wear you know things like that and um the sound quality was a big jump because now you had control over five well six channels technically right 5.1 um in ac3 dolby digital or um dts and yeah i mean that was that was that was it right there, right? That was, uh, y <laughs> that that could go on for years, right? You could just enjoy home theater with that setup like for years, it was so good. Um, and providing that sound, you know, with a real dedicated point one channel, yeah, it sounded absolutely amazing. So um, ever since then, you know, um, moving on from Laserdisc to the DVD days, uh, to the Blu-ray days, um, and now the 4K days. But for me, uh, DVD was uh, one of the first formats where I first saw um, our projector installer at the time was saying, look, you can actually see film grain. Uh, it was on Twister, like Twister was one of the first DVD releases, um, I think, on DVD. And uh, we were checking it out and we was like, yeah, that's, that's actual film grain from the camera like you can see this and we was like wow this is like you, you couldn't see i don't think you could see this on laserdisc that's the first time i was aware of this and um yeah it it took the detail to a whole nother level and really you was only gaining like what um 120 lines um going from 360 to like 480p actually it wasn't even 480p no it's still interlaced uh, dvd was still interlaced it took um, an oppo player to try and turn interlaced into progressive and i don't even think it was uh, that good uh, really doing that um i think still three two pull down um at 60 was actually still the best um it was a bit experimental going from um si you know 60 to 24 when when the disc what was on the disc wasn't actually 24 um or the at least the output wasn't you know so um but yeah the dvd days were a lot of fun there was a lot of innovation as well in players like i talked about there oppo oppo made absolutely incredible dvd players like they passed every single cadence flag interlaced flag that you could throw at them it just looked really really good like we was getting into some really good stuff here right and home theater was moving in a really positive direction right it really was it was a good time um laser disc though was still still had um it's well i wouldn't say foot in the market compared to dvd dvd just blasted off but Laserdisc was still a good format, in my opinion. Like, it definitely was. And I think a lot of Laserdiscs actually, again, still sounded better than DVDs. And I'm not quite sure why that was. Whether there was 
they thought they had to use dynamic range compression on the tracks or anything like that, but laser discs to me still sounded better while DVD actually looked better. So, um, you know, then we made the jump to Blu-ray and that is when we really started to see the jump in picture quality. You know, going to progressive images over interlaced right away is huge, but we're going up to 1080p now, right? And a lot of us actually still use Blu-ray today. And a lot of streams, like, uh, may even be 1080p today, right? That's, that's still around. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've seen, I've seen it all. And now we're on to 4K. And um, the, di the ability on 4K to make images look perfect is there. Um, you can encode on this format visually lossless, meaning that it can be as good as the so uncompressed source file, right? Now, it may not show it in the data, right? But if you had one versus the other on screen and it is encoded at the highest quality possible, you would not be able to tell the difference. Like, that's how close this format has gotten to the source files that they, the studios have. Unfortunately, you, you know, over the years, um, when 4K first started, many people, a lot of companies, didn't know how to max the format out, and many still don't, right? So, I mean, it's took Disney um, six years of complaints to really start pushing their encodes, and Disney encodes look good now, right? Um, their restorations are really respectful as well. Uh, Snow White, very respectful uh, presentation, and they're not scrubbing grain, right? They're not doing that. They're actually paying a lot of respect to their source material. But um, James Cameron, on the other hand, is not doing that. James Cameron is not paying respect to the source material in any way, and he is overusing the tools that he has and in my opinion, it's either him going for this look or he's getting extremely bad advice, right? Because um, this is not what picture quality is, right? This, uh, this release on 4K, this is not picture quality. I don't know what this is. This is, this is a step backwards, right? It is a huge step backwards. And um, we can just take a look here. I'll, 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 um, I'll continue to talk as we go on. What can you see? Okay, that's fine, as long as you see numbers. So this is the media info report. And uh, I'll just point some things out if it's too small. Uh, so the bit rate is actually 69.3, right? Relatively, uh, I mean, I wouldn't like to see uh, discs encoded this low, right? But it's higher than the other movies that he's released like Aliens and, um, and The Abyss, it's higher than them. But the picture quality is the worst. The bit rate's the highest and the picture quality is the worst. What this shows is that these restorations have nothing to do with bit rate whatsoever, right? You can throw, I could encode this at 98 megabits per second and it would still look like trash, right? And that's what this is, it's trash. I've seen reviews of the streaming version and even the, even the casuals that stream. When a casual is saying that this is bad on a stream, just think about what the disc people are going to say. Or the 5% of us, 2% of us, the hardcore that really want everything that is the best from their images. What are we going to say? Uh, it's not good. Um, their stream size was 93%. Um, that means they were 7% off of their target. So uh, again, you can, uh, you can work this out. Just remove the decimal points and add a, add a zero. Uh, 69, three zero, divided by 93, 74.5. They was targeting around 75 megabits per second. And um, they were 7% sure of that. 
and uh, one of the one of the reasons why is because when you remove film grain from content um, it forces the encoder to not place bits as many bits in areas right it's just as simple as that and there's so many shots here that are smoothed that there's no detail here anyway so you can throw as many bits as you like into this even with my bleeding edge settings i could not get this to look good there's no way you can get this to look good why because the source is the problem right the restoration is the problem so now um this says maximum content light level right which is the maximum peak white that it could be which is 201 nits the maximum frame average light is 201 nits so wait every single frame has the same has the same maximum light output as the average i, I don't believe this again you, the thing is you can fill in these numbers manually right and um an author authoring team encoding team can fill these numbers in right and i don't believe this or do i because there's no dynamics in these shots anyway so the difference between the light output the maximum light output and the average light is poor is this right but to me it just doesn't sound right so something is going on here and i think somebody is fudging numbers here um, I just don't believe it. It's in a it's in a 1,000 nit container. This is 200 nits, 201 nits. This doesn't need Dolby Vision. Another disc from from Disney that does not need Dolby Vision. It's in a 1,000 nit container, right? Dolby Vision at this point is just a selling point now, right? That's all this is. It's got a label on it that says Dolby Vision. More, more people are going are more inclined now to buy it. it doesn't mean anything. At 201 nits, you think this means anything? It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything at all. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure what they're doing here, but hey, maybe one of these is true. Probably the maximum content light is actually true. The average, mm, don't know. All right, let's get into the screenshots here first thing you can see is a no no you cannot do this you cannot combine uh film based artifacts with digital artifacts what is the film based artifact here glow and glare from film right which makes an image look soft if you put bright lights on film your your film will glow right the image glows right i love this look from film but when you then use other digital effects as well and combine them with digital noise reduction well now it looks like a mess so this is not that this are, are on i mean you may not be able to see it on laser disc again you probably couldn't see film grain that close but this is probably quite noisy in the source file right that they had and cleaning it up again and i've said this in my other videos when you do this to when you do this to noise and grain you start clumping grain into blocks right this looks bad um no gr no grain texture whatsoever and i'm getting this impression as well from this image and other images like this that they um, i'm going to use an old uh, video term here from the sdr days and Rec 709 days, gamma. The, the image looks as though it's been gamma raised, right? And there's no dynamics to this image whatsoever, right? The, so again, this, this uh, HDR and Dolby Vision and all this type of stuff, it's all useless with, with content like this. There's no dynamics whatsoever. Raise your brightness on your TV by 10 clicks, right? you the more you raise your brightness up the the more dynamics the picture loses right it doesn't look as dynamic anymore that you lose the blacks right you lose that black level uh look that punch well this movie doesn't have any punch smooth face as well there's just too much resolution loss as well um 
yeah, I mean, look, there's no resolution. Like, if I saw this on a on a Disney Plus stream, I'd be like, yeah, that's about right for Disney Plus, right? From a quality perspective, but even some of the even some of the Disney Plus people might be like, yeah, this is, even on Disney Plus it doesn't look good, right? Even on um, even on some other stream, some other bad streaming service like Prime, right? Where they've got raised gamma as well. They've got ra they raise their their brightness what by five percent. So you so TVs so Jimmy that's watching on a stream on his Roku doesn't crush blacks. That's what this looks like. I mean, it's just bad. Again, there's no dynamics here whatsoever. And again, you cannot do this in restoration where you have film glow, right? which is a film analog artifact and then which creates softness on the screen and then you soften again digitally with dnr to cover up all this noise that would have been in these dark areas it makes the picture look even softer and these actually don't look as though they've um like kind of artificially increased sharpness because of it which um again did, did, who, who came in for the day you know, again, who who's approving this? Um, I, I just have no idea. So the team that did it has no idea what picture quality is. And James Cameron has absolutely no idea what picture quality is. He has no, he has no idea what it is. Is he a great filmmaker? Yes. Right? Is he a great director? Yes. But that's where it ends. Right? That is where it ends. Because... Decision after decision, decision, movie after movie after movie on 4K has got all of these problems. All of his discs, need, all of his movies need to be re-released again. All of them. Terminator 2 has uh, just got announced. That's coming out this year. Right? How is it going to look? How different is it actually going to look to the release that's actually out there now? Sure, I'm assuming we're going to have a 4K scan, right? Well done, well done. But... You're going to use these same techniques, I know you are, to cover up the noise of film. And it's going to look bad, I think. I mean, I've got my fingers crossed on that one. These people do not know what picture quality is, and it scares me that when you get into epic-style restorations with, say, big but potential big budgets, and they're trying new things... These people are going too far. They've got too many tools and they are going way too far with their restorations. Like, this is a mistake. An absolute mistake. Again, we've got this raised gamma look again. Um, we've got digital noise now. It's not uh, noise from analog cameras, film grain. Now it gets covered up with digital noise. And you know it's digital noise because it's breaking down into different colors. No resolution whatsoever. Again, it might look good on your uh, crappy Disney Plus stream, right? That you pay, what, 12 bucks a month for. Doesn't look good on disc. The, I'm not saying the disc is worse than the stream. It's probably better than the stream, right? But this is the stuff I watch when i'm casually watching tv and i'm picking through my streams which is very little right i don't have many of them right i think it's like like netflix and peacock just to watch sports this is what i see on streams it's embarrassing it's embarrassing that you've got people that do not know what picture quality is right it is embarrassing to read reviews where people do not know what picture quality is. Great performance. This guy's hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. Some of the stuff he comes out with, you cannot say today. Right? Can't say it. When he says, ditch her? Yep, you can't. You cannot say that. Smoothed out. No resolution. No rigging, though, surprisingly. 
Somebody, uh, somebody should call them up about that. They should have added. Ring uh, I wanted more sharpness here, so I could see extra ringing around here. <laughs> this guy's hilarious. Um, no film grain, but it's turning into digital noise. So, I uh, this is another thing that I saw on this restoration. The, it, the, the way it is, it makes things look as though they're cardboard cutouts. I can't explain what it is. Um, well, okay. I don't like movies shot digitally, right? And I specifically do not like the way, say, James... Um, is it Mangold or Manigold? His movies look, right? That digital, that lighting, and the way things stand out like this. This is what it looks like. It looks digitally done, right? It's James Mango, right? He did the um, he did the um, Indiana Jones movie, and he's done some others. And he uses this almost this style of, of look and lighting on his characters. I hate it. It looks. I think it looks bad. I. But I, I prefer real lighting with real film. It looks more realistic, right? It just does. It looks way more realistic. Look at the lighting in Oppenheimer, right? Now look at this. It just doesn't look good. Breaking into digital noise now, right? So we're covering one film-based artifact for a digital artifact. Does this look better? It doesn't. Raised gamma look as well. Don't like it can't do this you cannot do this you cannot again have glow smoke and all of this stuff going on you can't have water effects like in uh, the abyss and apply these digital things because it does some weird things here and you lose resolution as well doesn't look good noisy um not from film though from from digital uh, it's just not a good look. This shot looks... <sighs> what number is this? This is 11. This shot looks raised. So there's a, this is a, a B Funky. This is just a, you know, an image editor. Uh, where are we? Where did I put it? Uh, True Lies. So what, number 11? Okay. So this this to me looks like gamma raised. So, uh, exposure, um, contrast, 25%. Okay, that actually looks better. It actually has some dynamic punch now. Now, cancel. Cancel will show you what they're doing before. And it, it, it you just lose this black level punch. So... I just do not like this. Uh, yeah, it just brings a bit more punch to it. Increasing contrast by about 25%. So when they were doing the restoration, they forgot to put um, any type of dynamics to... We're, we're moving into a HDR container now, so maybe we'll want to punch things up a little. They didn't do it. Like They didn't do any of that. And if anything, it looks as though somebody just came in one one day uh, drunk or something and put the gamma up by five to ten percent. I mean, I can't I can't tell you what happened here. So I just don't. I mean, explain to me, please, what has gone on here. No grain. Almost looks like digital makeup. Right? These people do not do not know what picture quality is. It's probably overexposed. This might be another shot that would be worth doing on the contrast, uh, the contrast thing. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, right? But uh, again, m more shots that... They look overexposed and... If you're, like, remastering something, uh, 
you could change if you like i mean these guys are they're changing the look of the original source files right the the, the, the scan and the way their movie looks anyway you could have made this look a little bit more dynamic right and again it looks a little cut out right to me um i'm getting just getting that impression as well zero grain uh, same thing, you know. It, it, this is this is just repeating now, right? And I am I've lost all confidence in um, James Cameron's ability to decide what is good and bad from a picture quality point of view. Again, I'm not saying his movies. It's, I think all of his movies, all of his movies are excellent, right? I think they're absolutely excellent. But this is a mistake. An absolute mistake. Um, oh, this this seat's hilarious. <laughs> I again, I, I don't think you could say a lot of what he says in modern movies. No detail, because um, you know, modern movies, you, you know, you can't get away with anything nowadays. So, without upsetting somebody, uh, but this guy's it's just hilarious. Um, some of the stuff you can get away with in the in the 90s <laughs> uh the in the 80s and 90s well to be honest any time up to about the 2k's right uh but anything after the 2k's you have to be a little careful uh, about what you say so um yeah same deal <laughs> no detail soft uh and absolutely no grain whatsoever this is lifeless content right and, you know, you could put this on on your streamer um, at the weekend. And, it, it, you know, even Jimmy down the road might be a little upset. Of, uh, don't, don't, doesn't really look good, right? Imagine saying that, though. That something doesn't look good on a stream. <laughs> That's just sad, right? That you could not see that this was bad before it was released. Uh, like who 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 is giving advice here who is who is judging this right i fear for restorations in the future because if these people are in charge of your film next it's going to look like trash right and they're going to ruin this because having a movie look like this yes it does ruin the experience it does right as much as i want to say yes i love films and i love movies Having it presented in this way detracts from the story. It is, um, it is, it is. It's a distraction the entire way through the movie. Having uh, restorations done this poorly. Again, this is digital noise now. I can see it in just a single screenshot. I know what to look for now. I know this look. I know this look. I know fine grain film look in a, in a single screenshot and I know this like collection of digital smooth noise now. Doesn't look good. Combining uh, smoke, glare, um, glow from film and this creates an incredibly soft shot. Nope. No, 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 no. You can't, you know, I'm kind of joking here, you know, and, uh, and that, but I just can't believe it. How would this pass quality control and who was looking at this? Was James Cameron the quality control guy? And again, I have to say, what are you viewing this on? Nothing here resembles picture quality. So, um, everybody's favorite scene when they were 12 years old. <laughs> I'm sure this one got replayed a lot, you know. And, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> the VHS back in the day was a wear and tear um, system, right? And um, the more you played over a certain spot, the more the the more quality degradation you would lose over however many times you played this 
well, if you rented this VHS like a year after it was released, this would be the part where the quality just fell apart. Like you could, like the tape was like starting to move because, you know, boys will be boys, I guess. And we're, you know, we're checking this scene out over and over again. This was the part that everybody replayed. If you had it on Laserdisc, you'd uh, be okay, but you know. Good scene though. That was, this is funny. Right, this is, this is good. Raised gamma look again. Where's the, where's the black punch? Where is this? Well, it isn't here. Actually, I'm maybe starting to believe this 201 nit average light level now that every single shot just looks flat. Yeah, maybe that is true. <laughs> Battle Aziz. We still joke about this today. We still like quote this. There's so many movie, old movie quotes that we're just going through our day and we like, we say, right? This one always comes up still. Batar um, Aziz. You, you can do it for anything, like a remote for, um, you know, the 4K player and stuff when you need to replay, you know, this is, this is funny. Uh really funny yeah no detail again though that's not funny so um digital noise here no film grain I even on a close-up shot you know we just don't have any resolution of this whatsoever so a big another big offender of this raised black gamma look as well um yeah well, it's i don't know I mean, this, this is just not good. All right, this is not good. What is going on here? Please tell me. All of this scene looked horrible. Professionally calibrated display where you can see the difference between reference discs and bad discs, right? This is a bad disc. This breaks every restoration law there is, right? This was the one where they came in and said, let's see how far we can push things, right? Well, Aliens got pushed too far. This just pushed it up to turbo mode, right? I mean, they, they just went way too far. This doesn't leave, If this doesn't look good on a streamer and it doesn't look good on a disc, what are you trying to achieve here? It's an embarrassment. Again, this is not good. So no film grain whatsoever again. Just the same thing. Great shot, by the way. The, these action scenes, again, nothing against his filmmaking. Nothing. He makes great movies. He makes great action movies. Um, and his, um, uh, with the, obviously the, you know, the uh, director of photography and things like that, they just grab they, they just grab excellent shots, right? There's so many good shots in this movie from that perspective, just a filming point of view and how the movie plays out and things like that. It's really it's amazing. Just uh, it's good for, it's good fun stuff to watch. And uh, this was a this scene was hilarious. Um, probably couldn't get away with this today either. Uh, a a woman. Uh, trying to do guy stuff, right? And can't can't do it. She, you know, she's just a home. Her, she's just a home wife, right? Or you know, whatever. And um, you know, she's not into this, right? But in today's movies, um, she would just grab that gun and shoot everybody, right? No learning, no nothing, right? She's just one of the guys. But here, there again, th this idea though is a very older idea, but it's funny, right? It, it, it's a funny scene. And we've lost our sense of humor in modern Hollywood with this. We really have, you know, our differences between male and female. They are funny in movies, right? But everyone's got so hung up and serious about this now, right? It's a, just a funny scene, right? This is going down and down, you know, it's killing all the guys, all the bad guys. You know, it's just hilarious. We have lost our sense of humor. Everything is so serious nowadays, right? 
everybody must be represented in the in the in the best way possible right we cannot have any flaws no flaws but uh yeah it's just a funny scene you know um super raised blacks again right good opportunity here to uh just change the uh, subject slightly because you know this is uh this is this is monotonous now like like this uh, restoration right where's the base where was the base on this disc again i i swear the laser disc had much more bass than this I swear it did. I went for a demo of this movie on Laserdisc with uh, Polk. Was it Polk subwoofers? And it was nuts. On Laserdisc. It was nuts. The bass. At the start, I'm going to walk right out the front gate. This scene they put on as well. Massive. These were, these were my reference discs, by the way. Uh, that I use to show off um, the system to my friends. Um, and then when I started working, I showed it to, to those guys, my, my, my other friends as well. And they was like, wow, is this real? Like, it was amazing, right? This just fell flat. This is an easy fix, right? You put your audio into DaVinci Resolve, right? And you normalize the volume to the same volume as a reference track. And you see how high the bass goes. They didn't do that. Right? So, oh, that's how, that's how, how much bass is in a reference track. Let's just use Oppenheimer, right? That's, or or uh, Tenor, right? The amount of bass that's in that track. Sure, he likes to run his subs a little hot. But that's a reference. But that's a reference maximum situation, right? Normalize that track, normalize your track, and see where the bass goes. The bass on this movie does not go as low as those movies at all. It doesn't, it, it's getting cut off. To me, it sounded as though it's getting cut, cut off at like 40 hertz. There's just, yes, there's some, some bass. But it, we're so far away from reference bass, a true magical home theater experience, it's not even funny. Now, the other two, uh, The Abyss and Aliens, again, they didn't have reference base, but they had, they had like, The Abyss when the uh, station was getting dragged along the floor. I was like, whoa, this is good. This is, this is moving the sound into a new Atmos um, experience. This is a modern mix. You can hear it. I had nothing on this disc. A, a massive missed opportunity. Massive missed opportunity. Now, I'm sure someone's going to come in with a BEQ and um, find out how to manually increase the bass, right? With PEQs and how much boosting do we need? And now we've got it to sound as good as the laser disc. You shouldn't have to do that. The mix should be good in the first place. This, again, just shows that they're they're listening to it on systems that are not properly calibrated. They're not. Uh, you know, J Jim is taking it home for the weekend just to test it on his system, just to see if the, set, the levels are correct or something. I, I, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with instances where th some of the things that I'm thinking about here are true because it just shows a lack of... Um, it's not even a lack of respect. It's not even respect. It's just we've waited this long for, for, for all of these mistakes. This is not a good Atmos movie, right? Massive mistakes are made. And I knew right away when the first explosion happened, they're not laying down into that subwoofer tra uh, channel enough, right? Not like a modern movie, not like The Abyss. Which was a nice, which was a really nice sounding movie. It had good, it made use of bass when it when it was needed. It didn't over abuse its power of having this brand new Dolby Atmos system. But this doesn't take advantage of anything, much like the video. When you can't even can't even get good picture quality out of a stream, it's embarrassing again to repeat myself. No bass, real bass. 
Again, I'm talking real bass here. No bass? There was more bass on the Laserdisc. There's more bass on a format that is, uh, what, 20, 30? I don't know how, when was it released? In the 70s. It may have been very, you know, very hardcore in the 70s. I, th I, I Maybe. So you're telling me a format that is that old, potentially 30, 40 years. I don't know if it is longer. I, I didn't know when it was actually released. That you can get better sound out of, of that format than you can today because you have no idea how to check balance and levels. Who did this? Who did you get to do this? A bunch of... In if you told me it was interns, the in we're going to let the interns deal with this one, right? We've got so much... We're, 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 we're uh, snowed under with work. You know... Would you, a new intern, he knows nothing. He's a Gen Zer, right? He know he, he's he was like, I don't know what film grain is. It doesn't matter. Film grain's noise. Don't worry about it. We want to get rid of all of that noise. And he just went. Whoosh. This is this is the the, the level. Uh, I just can't explain how bad this is. Amazing shots again amazing photography you know cinematography for just a fun action movie right these guys are laughing how bad the, the dnr is on this disc on this restoration you know there's a point where you just have to laugh because it's that bad digital noise now instead of, of, of film noise Laserdisc had more bass when these Harriers were landing. No bass. I noticed it right away. As soon as they landed, I was like, I said to my brother, the Laserdisc had more bass than this. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger in an action movie, eh? I mean, it's great. The movie's amazing, right? This, um, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't put two and two together and I know it's kind of you know, that this is actually Mr. and Mrs. Smith, right? Um, with Brad Pitt and Angelina. I didn't, I didn't kind of get it that they, when they were starting to work together. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually like that movie, which Mr. and I think people rave about Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I, di I didn't really like it, right? It was a, it felt a little too casual for me. Now this is like kind of like this comedy casual movie, but it was, I don't know, it just felt a, a different, it was done in a different way to me where I'm like, this is cool, right? You got the bad ask of, um, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and the, just this balance of it all. I, I just thought it worked really well. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, eh. I'm not in a rush to go go see that again, right? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I just, it's not something I care for. But this, this is just a fun, fun action movie. It's got a good sense of humor, you know. I mean, we've got a Harrier in the middle of the city just blasting buildings, right? Yeah, this is not happening today, you know. This was what we could do. This is the fun we could have in the 80s and 90s, right? Yeah, we've got some green screens going on here, but uh, <laughs> I mean, look, we, we all, even on Laserdisc, we could see that this was a bit, you know, this didn't look that great. Um, but it, it's, it, again, it's, it's a bit of fun, right? It, it, don't take this too seriously. The movie doesn't take it too seriously. It's just having a bit of fun, right? And that's what this movie is. You're fired. Yeah, well, the entire restoration team is fired because I would not use these people ever again. I would detract everything that they have done. And yeah, sure, this is a 200, uh, what is it, 200 million uh, restoration. Um, but it's your integrity on the line, uh, James, Cameron. <laughs> you know, this, this does not make you look good. Again, I've talked about this as well, jo even joked online. Was Terminator 2 a mistake? Was it? Because we're seeing all of the problems that that disc had 
and that restoration had in all of your movies, yes, including Titanic, right? They did overuse edge enhancement on Titanic to get detail back because they did use too much grain control. And towards the end of the movie, um, the restoration, in my opinion, just started to fall apart. Many, many scenes did not look good. But a lot of still scenes where um, Kate and Leo are on, say, the ship in the sun, and there's not too much camera movement and things like that, there's some good, really gorgeous shots there, right? Sure, they are over-sharpened, right? But there's some nice shots, right? Um, but some of those montage shots of the, the ship and stuff like that, no. Nah. I did not review Titanic out of respect for other people. And the reason is I did not want to bring down that movie and um, say that, hey, it's got these problems, these problems, and these problems, right? And have people not enjoy the movie because of it. I think it was disrespectful, right? It is one of the biggest and most successful movies ever made. And that movie means a lot to people, right? That movie means a lot to me. It has a lot of heart, right? And I didn't want to dog it, right? I didn't want to do that because it is, it's different to these movies, right? It has a dis different place. I just said I'm not reviewing it, right? But these types of movies that are like childhood um, favorites and things like this, somebody, like, can somebody speak out about this? Like, what, what's happening with this? You know, please. All of these, all of them re remastered. If you have to rescan everything at 4K, start the entire projects again, then start again. Sure, I know it costs a lot of money, right? I don't know how much it costs. I don't know how much it costs. But uh, you got ripped off however much you paid from this company to it, right? Having a bit of fun again. We're shooting the bad guy uh, with a rocket from a Harrier through a building and it hits the helicopter. <laughs> I mean, you, you, they don't make movies like this today, right? They just don't do it. Um, yeah, I can see. Yeah, I mean, I think we can all see now what's going on here. Zero detail. And again, I think, um, yeah, maybe even a stream 10 years ago, I would be upset by this, you know? I mean, I don't know how streamers feel about quality. I think a lot of people on streamers just put the thing on and just watch it and don't give a crap about it, right? Why? Because streaming is made for casuals, right? I'm not saying that in a bad way. Um, I'm putting emphasis on it, sure. But it's pick-up-and-go content, right? It's throw-away content on streaming, right? This isn't what I wanted, right? And again, I'm just so disappointed that either some advice he's getting or is like just not watching this on the correct displays. Or I, I, I don't know. But yeah, this is a mistake. I mean, if you want to talk about raised gamma, then here we go again. There's no dynamics in these shots whatsoever. It doesn't look HDR to me. I wouldn't... <laughs> If somebody told me um, this isn't even Reg 709, this is, what is it, 60? Oh, I, I can't even remember what the other color space is. This doesn't look HDR, right? This does not take advantage of the 4K disc format in any way. Uh, we've got raised blacks thing going on again. I think that's the end. Yeah, it's a mistake. Um, an absolute mistake. Again, I've seen a few reviews floating around and, uh, well, I, I look at them just to have a laugh for the day because um, they don't get it, right? If you cannot tell the difference between this disc and um, the Abyss, if you do not have a scoring system that can tell the difference between this disc and the Abyss, I'm not saying you, you, you should lose your right to, uh, uh, to write reviews, 
but you're giving you you know even potentially you could even have a big big platform right that meets that reaches thousands of people i think you're giving terrible advice to people right if you can't tell the difference between a 10 out of 10 disc and then this disc where does it belong on the scale of things well i'll tell you where this belongs on the scale of things this is a one out of five you could even say it's a zero, but that might be a little, you know, I, I, I am going to give it a one out of five, right? I think that's about it, 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 it. Everything that it tries to do, it fails. And I don't even know what it was trying to do. But everything I looked for or look for in picture quality is not there with this release. It doesn't have bold and dynamic colors. It has no dynamics and washed out colors. It has raised blacks, which makes you lose dynamics even further. It has no film grain. It has no texture. It has no life. An embarrassing release by James Cameron. And if James Cameron is in charge of what is right and what is wrong and the look that they want for their movies get him out of that get him out of that you uh, you have revoked your right to an opinion if you push out trash like this right i said this in my other video i have a website isn't it in my interest to sell you as many products as possible right yeah it's not as bad as everybody else is saying right i could say that i'm not saying that I'm how much integrity would I lose if I just put out this is a 10 out of 10 disc right it's 10 out of 10 what did you review uh, Oppenheimer at 10 out of 10 what did you review um, the abyss out 10 out of 10 do you have a difference in value for your scoring system or do you just want to cl get people to link uh, click a link to your Amazon uh, affiliate link and earn as much money as you possibly can it's not about that when I started this uh, company in 2006 it was about providing uh, we started on eBay right just giving people access in Europe to that was the whole idea because we we imported all of our laser discs when I used to live in England right now we live in the US. So I was like, well, why don't we do the why don't we do that? Why don't we send the US releases to the UK, to Australia, to Germany, if you can get them in there, um, you know, to, to, to Europe. And I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, then then I thought, well, well, why don't we make a website as well? And, um, you know, and do this. And you know, our, our business model uh, is expensive, right? Uh, shipping is included in, in prices. You know, uh, we are thinking maybe about doing it a different way, um, right? But our, our market is not US customers. It's actually the rest of the world. And, um, you know, some people rip us for that. But that's the market. That's the market like I want to go for because that's where my dreams started. That's where it was, importing US laser discs to the UK, seeing the real cut. Because the UK cut the hell out of their movers. And I was like, I am not doing this. Right? I want the direct, you know, almost like the director's cut version. So th this is a whole thing, right? Of how I want, you know, my love for home theatre, quality, and how I've done things over the years is what I look for, but I'm not here to say, sell you trash. No, I don't recommend you picking up this title, right? I don't recommend it at all because it offers no value to me. Sure, the value is the movie itself. I'll give you that, right? The movie's excellent, but the audio quality is disappointing. It doesn't fully access the power of home theater, a modern home theater. It doesn't do that. We're rolling off base too early. Right? I'm just... Yeah. 
<sighs> I think uh, Do Blue, Matt Do Blue, he's a reviewer who I respect. I think he said the other day uh, 4K uh, format has hit a new low with this release, and I could not agree more. This is a mistake. And again, who is making these decisions? I want to see every single movie that James Cameron has released rescanned at 4K with film grain intact. And um, sure, you can adjust the image stability if there's dirt, noise, and things, uh, not noise, but, uh, and things on the prints, that's completely fine. I want to see the film versions of these. I don't want to see this digital mess, right? I'll accept the abyss. Right, I think The Abyss was the best release out of all of these three. It has, it has issues. I can see the work that's been done to it. It wasn't a massive distraction though. And it had a nice Dolby Atmos upgrade. So for me, that's a win, right? But it still can look better. It can still look much better than, than how it did. So yes, even that tile, start again, right? Titanic was in the middle of two restorations. Start again, start from scratch, with a brand new philosophy, right? Scanning from the original camera negatives, right? Do no harm. That's what we want. That's what I want. If I have to pay a premium for it, and I said that I, I did say this in, in my other video, I realized like maybe 5,000 copies is uh, probably not enough for the hardcore, the hardcore collector that wants this. I'd pay up to $250. I mean, I don't know if there is a value on this because I know this, these types of restorations would cost money, right? I don't care because my goal is to watch this in peace I'd, and not be distracted by this digital crap that's going on with this restoration. Uh, that's enough. You know, that's enough beating down this movie for uh, however long this is now. I mean, I hoped for better with Aliens, and I really, really hoped for better here. Um, yeah. Very disappointed. We waited this long. <laughs> we waited this long for this. This mistake, this joke, right? That, I don't know, I could keep going on about the an intern that did this, or... You know, they brought their, hey, it was bring your kid to work day. And they pressed every single button on the, on the console. I'd believe it. Hey, it was a mistake. We're going to rectify it. We're going to give you the real version. I'd believe that, right? Give me something that, that, that I can, that I can believe. Because that's how bad this is. Zero respect for the source material. And um, James Cameron, you should be ashamed of yourself for releasing this. So, that's all I have to say. This is a very negative video. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. But, um, you know, someone's got to say this. Somebody, please, can we have others speak up about this? I mean, everybody spoke up about the Terminator 2 mistake. Or mis the entire mistake. And that it didn't look good. This is bordering on that. If not worse in many cases. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Yeah, and uh, what a shame. 10 years time, I want all of these re-released and done properly. Thank you. Have a good day. And uh, thanks for listening. Bye.